Independence Day weekend, everybody! Or if you are not in the United States, happy Monday! Who didn't see Lilo and Stitch? Celine, you've never seen Lilo and Stitch? You gotta fix that immediately. Lilo and Stitch is a, a wonderful, wonderful movie. Uh, so yes, welcome to today's live stream. Uh, we have some really good stories to go over. Uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, as always, uh, the way this works is that tr please try to keep your comments on topic while we're discussing the stories of the day. However, at the end of the live stream, you can ask me anything you'd like for the final 10 minutes of the stream. So keep those, uh, those outlier questions for, for that time. Uh, I like that you guys try and guess what I'm wearing. And you're, you're never right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jerome. Jerome gifted a membership. How nice. You guys are so great. Look at Matt with the Lilo and Stitch hate. That's nuts. Uh, I do agree that Lilo and... Hey, Mark. That Lilo and Stitch got a little bit um, diluted with all like the spinoffs and stuff that they did, but the original is still pretty incredible. All right, let's get started, everybody. Hold on. Here we go. Here we go. Hold on. St first story of the day. One second. Boop. Ah, the BAFTAs. The BAFTAs. So I was uh, trying to put in the hashtag for today's tweet, and I saw that some people were tweeting BAFTAs so white. And the truth of the matter is, that's true. Uh, they threw a real wrench into the awards season yesterday. It's pretty shocking. Uh, they had shocking wins across the board, and they had two people who, in particular, who were supposed to have won and have won every other award, K. Hoi Kwan for Best Supporting from Everything Everywhere All at Once and Angela Bassett for Black Panther, losing, losing to the Banshees of Inisherin. Now, I understand that's an Irish movie. And of course, the UK, uh, is, you know, that's part of the BAFTA section. So I think that they, uh, you know, maybe wanted to give some love to that movie, but it didn't win Best Picture or Best Director, did it? That, of course, was the German film All Quiet on the Western Front, which I got to tell you, wasn't that good? Uh, All Quiet on the Western Front, to me, was just another, yet another a movie about the horrors of war, and I didn't think it was particularly unique. I think if you want a good World War I movie, 1917 is, I think, still think a little bit better. Uh, I don't know what's going on with Ariana DeBose. Please don't ask me about it. Uh, it seems like a minefield just from your comments, and I don't want to comment on something I have not uh, heard about or been able to form an opinion on. So... All right, so we're talking about the BAFTAs. We're talking about a different scandal. Thank you very much. All right, so these are the winners of the uh, BAFTAs. Uh, so I think with Austin Butler, he won Best Actor. I think that's okay. You know, it's certainly a surprise. I made myself spit. I was so uh, shocked. It's certainly a surprise. That's my very diplomatic way of being like, what the F? All right, so Austin Butler won for Elvis. And he beat out Colin Farrell and Brendan Fraser, who, of course, were considered the two frontrunners for Best Actor. Now that he has, uh, now that Austin Butler has a BAFTA win and a Golden Globe win, he is very competitive in the Oscar section. So that's pretty surprising. Uh, SAG Awards are, I think, a little bit more important when it comes to predicting the Oscars. If Austin Butler wins the SAG for Best Actor, it's over. Uh, SAG Awards are this coming Sunday. Why is everything against The Last of Us? They picked the worst s s uh, streak of Sundays I've ever seen. There was the NBA All-Star Game last night. I was like, are you kidding me? All right, then, Kate Blanchett. Disappointing for sure. She beat out Michelle Yeoh, who I think should clearly win. Michelle Yeoh lost. Um, Bradley says it's weird seeing Irish people win in a British show with so many not knowing Irish and British are separate. Well, you're all part of the same landmass and, and basic area. So I think, you know, it's an olive branch to Ireland, quite frankly. That's how I view it. All right, so anyway, Kate Blanchett, although, so she, that's not shocking. It's disappointing that she would win. She beat out not only Michelle Yeoh for Everything Everywhere All at Once, but also Viola Davis and Danielle Deadweiler. But at least they were nominated. And, you know, Viola Davis is like, I don't care about any of this. She's a, she's a, um, uh, 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 um, uh, an EGOT winner now. So Viola Davis is like, whatever. Uh, so it's, it's, a, so it's, it's, it's very interesting. All right, so anyway, Kate Blanchett, you know, it's not shocking. It's just, I would say more, I'm not, I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed. <laughs> That's my reaction to that one. All right, so, I mean, I, I bet you Viola Davis, Jacob, wasn't even upset 
about not winning. I think she was upset that Michelle Yeoh didn't win. I think that Michelle Yeoh not winning is like pretty horrible. I mean, it's really bad. The fact that Michelle Yeoh is not winning, if, she, if Michelle Yeoh doesn't win the Oscar, I'm gonna be disgusted. Uh, we'll see if I'm even covering the Oscars because they might drop a Little Mermaid trailer and um, I'll be busy covering that. All right, so anyway, I think the supporting is where you start to be like, what the F? So in supporting actress, Carrie Condon, well, first off, they, they messed up and they accidentally said Carrie Mulligan's name first. And you're like, what kind of an organization are you running over there? So they said Carrie Mulligan for she said, but she actually didn't win. So they're like, no, no, sorry. It's this very similar, it's like, what did they have, my picture? You know, it wasn't the name on there because Carrie Condon and Carrie Mulligan actually look somewhat alike. So they're like, no, no, it's Carrie Condon from the Banshees of Inner Sharon. And you know what? She was pretty good in that movie, but she was no Angela Bassett in, uh, in Black Panther Wakanda Forever. So it's kind of crazy that Angela Bassett didn't win that. I can't, Angela Bassett's like, I can't believe I flew across the pond to get slapped in the face. That's what I'd say. Uh, I mean, it's pretty bad. I'm surprised. So anyway... Uh, that was really shocking. And then it got even more shocking that uh, Kei Hua Kwan, for Everything Everywhere All at Once, who also attended the event, lost to Barry Keegan. And, you know, Barry Keegan's very good in that movie. He doesn't do anything I've never seen before. And, I mean, I'm sure Barry Keegan will get nominated at some point again. But I, I think that I've seen both movies. So this isn't like a I didn't see Tar situation. I've seen both movies. And I feel that Kei Hua Kwan's performance was much better. So it's kind of weird. I mean, I'm very happy for Barry Keegan. He had a very nice tweet about it. It's hard, you know, I feel bad for these actors being kind of caught in the middle of it, being like, you know, like, I didn't vote for me. And you're like, did you not, though? <laughs> but I mean, like, I don't know. Like, I, if I were at this event, I'd be like, boy, I feel kind of weird being at this event when it got so horrible in terms of who the winners were. And then, of course, All Quiet on the Western Front won Best Picture and... Um, uh, best director. Let's do a poll. Let's do a poll. Because I'm kind of tired about people saying it's about merit and the people who are the best actors win. And you're like, well, it's suspiciously always the white people who seem to have done the best when it comes to awards. So that seems weird to me. So how do you feel about 2023? Oh, look. Um, Tanya. Tanya, that's so generous of you. Gifted five memberships. BAFTA winners. So we'll start with Love Em All. I don't want to sway people. Love Em All. Next is uh, OK with uh, OK with lead. Not supporting. Uh, OK with supporting. Not with lead. Who would, who would vote for that? But I'll put it in there anyway. And then, hate them all. No, I'll, no, no. Injustice. That's what we'll do. Okay. Honestly, I think only Austin Butler is like, okay, here. And again, Kate Blanchett is just more disappointing than, than uh, downright what the heck. But it's pretty shocking. Whenever actors of color talk about the system being stacked against them, I mean, you're, they're giving them some pretty amazing evidence. They'll be like, uh, I'll just point you towards the, the recent award ceremonies. <laughs> and, you, and, you know, and I think that, it's, I feel bad that a lot of these actors are being gaslit. I think that's also really horrendous. That people, you know, like the Andrea Riseborough situation is really horrible. Uh, and I just, I think that it's just a very bad situation. Okay, it's Keowen. Thank you, Finn. Thank you. Hey, William. Uh, so yeah, so you can vote on that for a moment, but, uh, was Kate Blanchett going around saying get rid of awards? Kate Blanchett should stop talking about awards. She should just say thank you, or, uh, I'm very happy for the other winner. I don't think anybody was like, Kate Blanchett, how do you feel about awards? Hey, Zach. I mean, that doesn't make any sense to me. Aston says, I'm happy with the all quiet. You can ask me some questions about the Oscar situation if you'd like while we wait for this poll. Uh, I'm happy with the all quiet team. Div give a shout out to lead Felix Kammerer, despite the movie, he was very good and he did. He wasn't a good actor. He did do a nice job. 
oh, William, I'm so glad you decided to be, you, you, I'm so glad it was important to you to become a member. And, you know, I'm glad you waited for when the time was right for you. Some of you really feel that Kate Blanchett's going to win the Oscar. She wins that Oscar over Michelle Yeoh. I'm going to feel really bad for Michelle Yeoh. That would just be so uncool. Hey, Zoli. Ah, uh, Angelo, thank you. I'm so glad. Happy anniversary to us. Yeah, BM, I think Colin Farrell should be winning. But, you know, I'm not upset about Austin Butler winning. He did do a very good job. Uh, Elliot says, film Twitter is disgusting towards Michelle Yeoh, Angela Bassett, and Kehoe Kwan. They think their performances aren't Oscar-worthy. And it's career, career, who is saying that? That's horrible. Their work was incredible. Oh, look, Caleb's like, I got gifted a membership. And I agree with Sahar. I think this is Michelle Yeoh's only chance to get an Oscar. This is it. Hey, Angie. And this is it. It's not going to be another chance for her. So it's really sad. Bradley, I think people just really like tar for some reason. I think it really plays to the target audience who votes for these things. Hey, Zathaniel. Zathaniel, that's a cool name. Uh... Hey, Kagatso, that's a cool picture. All right, let me look at the poll, and then we'll move on to the next story. Overwhelmingly, you agree, injustice. 60%, 16% are very happy with all the, uh, all the votes. That's, uh, you guys must be part of the academy. But there is a very small but vocal contingent that is supporting this. And I, I think, um, you know, I really would ask you to, to, to think about, you know, past awards and, you know, the performances that were done here. I, I, it's just, I think it's very unfortunate. And then 15% uh, had a problem just with supporting and 8% were okay with supporting and not leave. So interesting, complex situation. Steven says, Kate saying get rid of rewards is very privileged. She already has them and as a white actress, lots of opportunity could greatly help someone like Michelle Yeoh. Yeah, I mean, oh, that's true. Kate Blanchett could have shown her support for Michelle Yeoh, but instead she's like, ah, oh, my friend Andrew Riseborough. Frank W. says, Asian Country Awards only awarded to Asian movies, Grace. Why don't we don't even think, consider. Uh, Frank, come on. Frank, I would ask you to take a look around Europe. And if you think that Europe is white, I, you are must, I don't, I think you must have your eyes closed. So, I mean, I think there's clearly a lot of diversity in, in Europe. And I think that it's crazy to, to say that, that there isn't. Zanthaniel says, frankly, Twitter's turning into fortune. I think you should consider maybe looking at Mastodon or other platforms. You know what? Let's see. I got my invite to Blue Sky the other day. And uh, I do think that Twitter is getting really weird. It's getting weird. It's getting weird over there. I'm not going to lie. But, you know, I've built up a big space over there with a number of you, and it's hard. You know, Twitter would really have to crash and burn. But I am taking a look at uh, Blue Sky. Although, uh, you know, so we'll see what happens. Chris says, P opinion. I have not seen Ariana's performance, Ariana DeBose. And then Heather says, Europe has been a melting pot for thousands of years. Yeah, so, yeah, okay. All right, let's, this is getting a little bit crazy. Let's move on to the next story of the day. But I think really, based on the ease of, I think that, you know, obviously there was um, different people moving to different um, places, you know, due to, I think, some unfortunate reasons and other reasons throughout history. I think that the current modernization of travel, making it easy, has, I feel, really taken the world, like, you know, and taken the world and shook it up. And I think everybody's mixed now. And I think that, you know, you, I think no longer are, is our countries divided eth by ethnicity. I think that you have different people of different ethnicities in every country. And I think that's fascinating. And I think that um, that's just the way it is. I mean, it's shocking to me that some people still believe that's not the case. Bradley says, more actors should be like Jamie Lee Curtis and hype up Michelle Yeoh big time. Well, Jamie Lee Curtis is also in that movie. So, I mean, there's, uh, that's part of it to some degree. All right, let's move on to the next story of the day. Frank, uh, I, you know, I would say to everybody, don't have hate in your life. Hate is just going to weigh you down and, and ruin things for you. It's just too exhausting to have that much hate. 
I mean, I promise you, if you let it go, you will be happier. All right, let's move on to the next story of the day. All right, let's move on to another dramatic story. All right, story number two. Yeah, that's right. What, who, who said that? Oh, it's funny. That's right, Elliot. Super boop. <laughs> okay. Super boop. All right, so a couple of people were tweeting me this morning being like, whoa, what's going on with this James Gunn uh, drama with Superman? And so I was like, more drama. Let me look into it. So here's what's going on, and then I'll tell you my take on it. So I think that James Gunn needs to feel, James Gunn doesn't need to respond to everybody, okay? I can see where he was coming from with that initiative being like, hey, I have a direct link to the fans. Uh, You know, I talk to you guys, right? I mean, I think it's great to be on this level, but James Gunn is running a business with, uh, you know, a lot of people who, you know, there's a lot of moving parts and he's, you know, it's, you know, he's commenting on stuff that does not just involve him at this point. And I think that makes it harder. Uh, also, I think when you throw, when you throw out so much chatter, I think that it's hard to keep track of probably even for him. And I think that it's easy for people to get confused. I mean, you wouldn't believe like, it's crazy how things get like the internet is the biggest game of telephone anywhere. Like, let's take the two-factor authentication situation that came up with Twitter on the weekend. With Twitter using poor language and saying you needed to remove text fact two, two-factor authentication. And it did, you didn't need to get rid of two-factor authentication. In fact, you would be making your account more secure if you switched over to uh, codes or a two-factor authentication app, which is free. But everyone just freaked out and, like, just totally believed that they didn't have to have two-factor authentication or any authentication, even though it was right there in black and white in the language that everybody was posting online. And I think that was like a wonderful example of how the internet misconstrues things. Uh, I think for a number of reasons. I think it's telephone. I think people have hot takes. I think people have quick takes. I think some people do it intentionally. I think some people do it unintentionally. I think maybe sometimes there are language barriers because we have a bunch of people all in the same space. Like, remember when Zendaya, uh, the New York Post, said she had an upset win uh, for the Emmys? And people are like, why would that make you upset? They don't understand that that's, that's a, a term for, you know, a surprise win. Uh, and so, you know, I think I just see that more and more. And, you know, but Sean says Gunn should stay off of Twitter. I don't think he should totally stay off of Twitter, but I think these things where he does, where he responds to people, when he responds to replies with a reply, I think it's messy. I think it's really, really messy. And he got himself into a lot of trouble today. I don't think he got himself into a ton of trouble, but he got him, I guess how I would describe it is he got himself into unnecessary trouble. So, hey, Platinum Diva, I'm sorry, I'm sorry you're working the graveyard shift, but I'm glad you stopped by to say hi, we miss you. We miss you, Platinum Diva. So somebody said to James Gunn, they were asking him to clarify about the Superman situation. And he let it slip out that um, he had been hired to write the current Superman movie that he's working on six months ago, way beyond before he was hired and way before Black Adam came out. Hey, KJ. Like, I don't know why that anybody needs to know about that. I, I, I mean, I just don't think anybody needs to know when that deal was made. Like, why do that? Like, it really threw a lot of the other Warner Brothers people under the bus. You know, that was under current leadership, so it can't be blamed on, like, Toby Emmerich and stuff like that. So it's like, just why do it? Why do it? Just like he went around the other day before that and was like, I never said Superman was going to be 25 years old. And you're like, but you did say he was going to be younger, and you used that as an excuse as to why not to cast Henry Cavill. How old is Henry Cavill? I forgot. Henry Cavill is 39. He's, you know, he's still perfectly capable of playing Superman. So when someone says you want to go a lot younger with Superman, people just assume you're going to go much younger. Let's see how much, uh, how old Robert Pattinson is. Robert Pattinson's 36. So, if, I mean, there's only a three-year age difference between the two of them. If Robert Pattinson can be Batman, I don't see any reason that, you know, Henry Cavill couldn't be Superman. And I didn't even want to keep Henry Cavill. I wanted a fresh start. But, you know, here we are. Uh, So, you know, I just think, like, this is where you get into trouble. You know, when you start, uh, you know, get, you know, it's just, it's, it's, you know, you're splitting hairs instead of just chopping them all off and saying we're starting from Pattinson. 
And that's it. So everybody was like, oh, you guys duped Henry Cavill into saying he was back as Superman when you knew that wasn't true and you'd already hired James Gunn to write a new Superman movie. So I, I like, came a new round of that today. All right, so the, again, just to reiterate, James Gunn let it slip that he's been writing Superman. He had that deal in place six months ago before he even got the DC situation, uh, before Black Adam was released, and it just caused people to be more upset and to say it was even more unfair to Henry Cavill. So here's my take on the situation. I told you that when Henry Cavill tweet, said that on Instagram, that he took it upon himself. I do not believe that Warner Brothers told him to say that. I, I certainly, I think they might have told him to talk about his cameo in Black Adam, but I don't think they told him to say, you're back as the new Superman. You could have said, I'm back, as in they, maybe they talked about it and he said, can I say I'm back? And they were like, yeah, technically you are back in the Black Adam movie. But I think Henry Cavill blew it up. I mean, I told you that Henry Cavill and his team were trying to back Warner Brothers into a corner to give them no choice but to renew his contract. So I think, you know, like, I don't think that anybody's, like, really a victim here, and I don't think anybody's really to blame. You know, everybody did what they had to do, and I think that the reason, the real problem is that you don't have strong leadership from Warner Brothers locking all this stuff down. You know, and James Gunn says that he's going to be that strong leadership, and he's going to lock everything down. Uh, thank you, Dwayne Henry. But is he? I mean, I think he's just creating more problems with all this Twitter drama. You know, it's like, just announce these movies when they're ready. Like, I'm not willing to just say, I'm curious to see who he casts. Although I have to say, I included the Superman, All-Star Superman cover, because last night I was going through the comic again, because, you know, I haven't read it since it came out. And, you know, James Gunn has made it clear that he's been looking at this as inspiration. And I read it again, well, I skimmed it, and I was like, because, you know, I got to tell you, it's Grant Morrison's zaniness, and I would really, really advise James Gunn to stay away from All-Star Superman because it has a ton of similarities to his, and I can see why he likes it, because it's very similar to his take on Guardians, and it's very similar to his take on Suicide Squad. And I don't think anybody wants to see Superman in that vein. So I think, I think you know, I would tell him to read Superman for all seasons, which is my favorite Superman comic, and to watch Superman the Animated Series. I think that's what people want to see. I think that the zaniness, I think the space elements of this Superman, all-star Superman story are just too much. It's very zany. It's very out there. It's very Guardians. It looks very much like Guardians. Damani, I think Superman, all-star Superman is very popular with a small contingent of comic book fans. The same that we're going around saying, oh, we love James Gunn's Suicide Squad, but yet it didn't go and match with the mainstream public. I don't think anybody wants to see zany Superman. I mean, again, I'll wait to get, you know, give it a fair shot until I see it. But I don't think that's what anybody wants. I think people want Christopher Reeve Superman. They want animated series Superman. And they want, uh, um, I think, stuff like Superman for all seasons. Uh, I think there is a small group like John Boyce. I don't know if you're saying, you no, you don't want that. I'm not quite sure. Okay, I'll do a poll. That's right, Alex. Let's put it to the poll. All right, what kind of Superman do you want? This isn't scientific, obviously. Okay. What kind of Superman movie do you want? Okay, traditional, AKA Kansas Metropolis. Oh, that's too many things. Hold on. And then we'll do Zany All Star. Good, good for me. And then um, I, I trust Gun. And then just to just to do it, we'll say I don't trust Gun. <laughs> no, I don't want to do. No, nah, oh uh, yeah. I need to see it. That's what we'll do. I don't want to be negative. I just said a big thing about hate. I need to see it. I need to see it. I need to know what I'm working with here. I saw some comments here. Let me go back here. Hey, Bass Creek. Hold on. Nick Warner says, Grace, who do you think would be part of Gun's Justice League lineup? It's way too early for a Justice League, quite frankly. Hey, Jesse. Ashton says, James Gunn making Superman would be just another James Gunn movie with Superman in it. 
That's my big fear. Eric says, I think he just likes Superman and an all-star. I think he just likes how Superman is an all-star Superman. Oh, that would be good. I would hope that was the case. Thank you, Nicholas. I think I missed something here. I think I've got them all caught up. All right, you guys are voting. Sean, I don't know about Sam Claflin. Um, Jeff says, since we need to establish a new Superman, it has to start in Kansas Metropolis, but I wouldn't mind some space stuff at the end of the movie. If it's Brainiac, bring it on. I mean, everybody has said very clearly they just want a Brainiac Superman movie. And so I hope that James Gunn, you know, he's been teasing some characters recently. Hey, Zin thank you, Nathaniel. Thank you again. I have not heard anything about an Aquaman test screening. I'll look into it, but I haven't heard anything about it. I would be shocked if anyone walked out on a test screening. Heather says, DC Phantom is too divisive due to weak management at Warner Brothers, and the IP in Zaslav isn't helping with his behind the scenes. I think that's true. I think that, you know, they're not aggressive. They, you know, they, gotta, you know, they, just don't, they don't have a clear direction. You want the Yellowstone guy, Nacho? That's actually maybe, you know what? That's actually not a bad idea, Nacho Flores. Uh, what's his name? Taylor, Tyler Sheridan. I'd be like, maybe I would call it Tyler Sheridan. That's not a bad idea, actually. At first I laughed, but now I'm like, you might have something there. Let's see. Oh, the votes. Oh, a lot of votes today. A lot of votes. Let's end the poll. Okay, hold on. Here it comes. 51% want a traditional Kansas Metropolis storyline. Well, 30% are willing to give James Gunn the benefit of the doubt. 30% are like, let me see it. Let me see it. 11% just trust Gunn. You just trust him no matter what, which makes sense. I think that number looks about right to me. And then Zany All-Star is good for me, 6%. So yeah, it's pretty low. I think most people, see, I told you. I mean, but maybe it's just us. You know, of course, the proof would be in the box office. Dre Film says, I want my Superman cornier than the fields of Kansas. Not that lowbrow humor, if you know what I mean. Yeah, Superman cannot have lowbrow humor. That is totally not appropriate for Superman. He is a good, you know, he's a good old boy. He's like, it's, I think it's, it's, it's like really important to get that right. Finn Moreau says, I think Gunn needs publicity training. He needs to exercise restraint on Twitter regarding both his tweets and interactions with fans. He doesn't want to look like a liability. It's really tough. I'll tell you what somebody told me at one point who works in Hollywood. And I was like, why don't you tell this person to stop tweeting so much? And this person had a very wise thing to say. And they said, if I tell someone who tweets too much to stop tweeting, since they like to tweet, they're probably going to tweet that I told them to stop tweeting. And turn all, you know, you don't want to fit the situation where, you know, somebody starts turning all their fans against you. So I would also add to that, don't be the kind of person that people can't talk to. And I think that's a really good lesson in life, just in, just in general. Don't be the kind of person that people can't say things to in confidence. Because you know what? You're just going to lose out. You're going to lose out on people talking to you, and you're going to lose out on good advice. Some of it will be bad advice for sure, but you're not going to get the good advice if you can't take both. Wellman says, after the adult Aquaman jokes, I'm worried about how much respect Gunn actually has for these characters. Yeah, I really hated that too. Thanks for bringing that up. That was horrible at the end of Peacemaker. Uh, Nicholas says, Captain America, good guy, hero behavior, it dri uh, drives me crazy. I want a good summer with some, what are you even saying, Nicholas? <laughs> I think you got too many typos in there. Marco says, a Superman movie with tragic plot for Metal Metallo, manipulated by Lex Luthor, focusing on Lois and Clark romance. I would, be lo I would love to see Lois, I would love to see them fix Lois. Lois has been messed up for a long time. Sh uh, Shashank says, uh, till the time DC gets his stuff together, there will be superhero fatigue. Well, let's see. People like Flash for some reason. Carlos says, although that TV spot was excellent. Carlos says, just read All-Star Superman. Why do you think it's zany? I mean, the guy, there's a guy walking around in a Technicolor dream coat, man. I mean, I think the material speaks for itself. Uh, Westerly says, rumor, Legion of Superheroes animated. Uh, I haven't heard that. Uh, hey, Ice Rhino. Thanks for joining. Uh, and Zante says, I agree. Adam DeMarco from White Lotus for Superman. I agree. I love that casting. I think he has, he fits with Robert Pattinson, but he has a very different look. I am like all in on that. I think it's a great idea. I think it's like a great, great idea. Uh, Mila Kunis actually wouldn't be a bad Lois Lane either, Matthew Mayhar. I like her. I think that's a good choice as well. 
All right, let's go to the third story of the day. Then you can ask me anything that you would like. Hold on. Third story of the day. Let's go. Boom, baby. So on Friday, Zach Galifianakis signed on the dotted line to join Disney's live action Lilo and Stitch. And people are like, oh, my God, are you still making that? <laughs> I got to see what Stitch looks like. I don't care who's in the rest of the cast. I think, obviously, it's all going to matter as to whether or not they get Stitch right. I'm very, very worried about this movie. It's a wonderful film. Chris Sanders did it at Disney before he imploded with them and then Bolt was such a bad experience that he quit the company. Chris Sanders, always so close to greatness, but yet so far. So I'm not sure who Zach Galifianakis is playing. They have not talked about who he's going to play. Uh, he is there standing in front of the red carpet for Ron, uh, Ron's Done Wrong. Ron's Done Wrong was a Fox animated movie that ended up going to Disney Plus and stuff when Disney acquired it. And I have to tell you, it was actually quite good. So Ron's Gone Wrong was excellent. And Zach Galifianakis did a voice there. Uh, I agree with Josh Love's uh, movies. I, I think Pleakley is probably a pretty good... I think he, and as Binge God said, I would guess that he's doing Plinkley. Uh, he's doing the voice and maybe the motion capture for Ple uh, Pleakley. And I think I have to tell you, he's actually a really good choice for Pleakley. Of course, one of the aliens. A lot of representation in Lilo and Stitch. And I'm curious to see how it would play today because uh, the two aliens actually end up kind of being LGBT. Uh, and then, you know, of course, it's talking about how family is like family or in the, or in the family that you make. So it's a really, it's a really good um, uh, movie. It's an excellent movie. It was way ahead of its time. And Stitch, I think, has become as popular as... Um, as Mickey Mouse to some degree. Very, very popular character in the Disney theme parks. Moves a lot of merch. Uh, so I think it would be great. He could be, he could be Gantu as well. But I think that Zach Gal... I, I would be surprised if Zach Galifianakis was Stitch. Here's the problem, though. Although they've been having someone do Stitch ever since, but Chris Sanders, of course, voiced the original Stitch, um, and he doesn't work with the company anymore. Hey, AG68. Don't, I'm glad you made it. Uh, but let's see, let's see. Mario says, where are these auditions? Oh, okay, you know, I get asked a lot about auditions. Uh, they don't have open auditions for these movies for the most part. Uh, sometimes they do, sometimes for children's roles, but it's very rare that they have auditions, open auditions. So a lot of times people will say, how can I submit myself for these movies? You need an agent uh, or a manager who can do that for you. Uh, or you can send, obviously, to the casting directors yourself uh, there are breakdowns in some of the magazines uh, for actors, as, Dan, as uh, Wade Chadwick just pointed out. Uh, and you can just send your headshot to casting directors as well, but it's a little bit harder to get noticed unless, you know, they really need you, and unless you're a very specific talent. Uh, so, so they know also, they often want a name. So what they'll do is they will... Uh, with casting, uh, the casting directors will go out to agencies and management companies and they say, we're looking for name talent. And then they'll, they'll submit their name talent. And so that's how this usually comes uh, about. Uh, that's right, Antonio. There used to be something called Backstage and stuff like that. It was a magazine that would do auditions and it maybe still exists, but you're never going to get a big movie in there. This stuff is all done within the agent manager system for the most part. Uh, and usually they want talent. They want a name, uh, you know, you got to work your way up on smaller projects so that you kind of become a little bit of a name and then you can blow up to a big project. So it's, it's, it's complex. Uh, they don't just have like an open casting call to just anybody who's interested. Uh, it's, you know, and you know, I think there's some questions to whether or not that's the best system, but it's the system that we have. Uh, all right, so that's the third story of the day. We'll see who Zach Galifianakis is playing, but I would actually tell you to watch Ron's Gone Wrong. It's a great, it's a great little movie. All right, so it is, uh, let's see here, 3.42. You can ask me anything you'd like uh, until, we'll call it 3.45. So you can ask me anything you'd like until uh, 3.55. Uh, Hugo says it's almost impossible to break out in a big film because they want big names to attract audience. That's a good point. But think about like that actress who came out of nowhere for the bear, right, who played the sous chef, and now she just got called up to Marvel. So you just have to like work hard and get into like pay your dues, and then you get into like a hot show, uh, and then the, the big leagues come a calling. 
Uh, Chris, I don't have a scream screen, a sick screening just yet, but I have been talking to Paramount's office, so uh, I should have that hopefully soon. Allison, I have not heard anything about the new Spider-Man contract just yet. Uh, Brody Rule, I don't know if uh, Robert Pattinson is in the Penguin show, although he has, I think, you know, obviously been spotted flying into the area. Uh, cool guy 567 says, hey, Grace, love your channel. Thank you. Is there any way you can get a pre-show poll so we can officially vote on glasses? No glasses. Okay, and I'll start trying to wear the glasses more often so there's a chance that I will be wearing them. That's funny. I'm glad you guys, that's funny, cool guy. I'm glad you guys are having fun with that. As told by Alex, as I was thinking about Violent Night 2, Elizabeth Banks is a good counterpart to David for Mrs. Claus. I actually don't like her for that because I think she's a little bit too overexposed at this point. I would like maybe, I can see where you're coming from and I think that I could see her getting the role, but I personally would try and go for someone who was a little bit more of a surprise. Oliver, my cocaine bear screening is tonight. I don't know when the embargo lifts. I'll ask when I go over there. Luna, I have been watching Harrison Ford on Shrinking. I think it's a great show. You're right. He's actually trying. And I think Shrinking is an excellent show. It's great. It's on Apple TV for those of you who uh, don't watch it. Uh, MJV, yes, that's correct. The Batman 2 will start filming in November, I found out. That's when it's set to start filming, which means that the Batman is going to go into pre-production soon, which means it'll start building its sets, hiring talent in front of and behind the camera, and that means they will likely start casting. So that's pretty exciting. Eric says, Grace, you missed an important character in The Last of Us Episode 6. I saw, I saw that was apparently Dina. Uh, I don't know too much about uh, uh, Season 2 or game, the second game, the sequel of The Last of Us, but I know about Dina now, boy. Uh, and I'm glad that fans were so excited about that. Let's see here. Uh, if you don't know, I don't want to tell you, say who Dina is if you aren't familiar, because I don't want to have spoilers for people who haven't played the games. Al Watch says, thoughts on Icon and Rocket? Would love to see them in the movie, but do you think that they could have... Who are Icon and Rocket, Al Watch? Are you talking about, like, what, the authority? Nacho Flores says, Tina Fey, is that who you're saying for um, Mrs. Claus? That's, an, that's a funny choice. I can't really see her with David Harbour, but I think that's a funny choice. Johnny says, future movie math, can Avengers, Kang Dynasty, and Secret Wars gross $3 billion and surpass the Avatars? Ooh, let's see how the movies come together. I'm a little nervous with who's writing both of those. I mean, you have the writer of Quantum Mania writing Kang Dynasty and the writer of Multiverse of Madness writing Secret Wars, so that scares me. Secret Wars maybe could do it, though, if they really have as many... Uh, if, if Secret Wars has as many cameos as, as word is on the street... It's going to be amazing. It'll be like No Way Home on steroids. You know what Multiverse of Madness was supposed to be. But because that didn't materialize for Multiverse of Madness, let's not get too excited about Secret Wars until we get closer to the date. Dan says, do you think Marvel should involve the Daniels to consult on the Multiverse Saga scripts and Avengers films or too similar to Rick and Morty writers? I think the Multiverse is really just too complex, and I'm not a fan of it. <laughs> I mean, let's see how it works out, but they really sh I saw someone say they should have gone with Secret Invasion, and I agree. I think Who's a Scroll is a much more fun game to play. But I really like Jonathan Major, so I would like this to work out for him. Joelle says, hey, Grace, hope you're having a great day. You too, Joelle. Was curious about Avatar 3 and Sonic 3. Do you think the Sonic movie will have any dent on the third? Hope you have a great rest of your Monday. Oh, uh, Joelle, that's so kind of you. Uh, you mean because they're opening in the same space? I bet you Sonic moves uh, just to scooch because I th there's room for both of them to succeed. They're both very, very popular. Frank says, hey, uh, since James Gunn wants to keep the actors the same, do you think Haley Cuoco, Kaylee Cuoco could end up playing live-action Harley Quinn? I don't think that she will. Um, I think James Gunn will keep Margot Robbie, and I think that Matt Reeves will get a new Harley Quinn, just like uh, Todd Phillips has his own Harley Quinn. It's too many Harley Quinns, but, you know, if Anya Taylor-Joy was Harley Quinn, I think we'd all be, like, just so so uh, happy that it would be ridiculous. Matt Damage says, not to pick on poor Warner Brothers, but what would happen if a big entertainment company folds and shuts down? Why are they so poor but still here? They're in debt. They're in massive debt from the acquisition. 
Uh, and they won't shut down. They will, I'm, you know, everybody thinks that as soon as 2024 hits and they can legally sell Warner Brothers off, Discovery can, they'll probably sell it to Warner Brothers, which has been thinking of buying it since before AT&T did. So AT, I guess uh, Universal Comcast just waited for everybody else to drive the price down. I mean, the stock for Warner Brothers Discovery is shockingly low. Uh, oh, Frank. Okay, Frank. Frank wants to clarify. Frank says, I, was, I need to clarify. I'm born and raised in Asia, so I have a different understanding of the world than many of you. Please don't be offended by my comments. I'm sorry, no hate. You know, Frank, thank you for clarifying. And that does talk about how, um, you know, that does speak to how, you know, things can be misconstrued and you don't have a lot of space to really say where you're coming from on the internet. And uh, Frank, I'm glad that you took the time to uh, say what your perspective was. And, um, you know, I guess Asia is more monogamous than everywhere else still, which, so you probably have a very different perspective, come to think of it. Um, I wonder if Asia ever really will. Uh, I think there's some diversity in Asia that's starting, but I wonder if you'll ever have a situation like the rest of the world. Um, so that's interesting, Frank. But I, I, just so you know, to, to, to expand your horizons, uh, the rest of the world, uh, except maybe for the Middle East, uh, but you know, I'd say that Europe and the Americas and Canada, um, and I don't know how diverse South America is, but I would say for sure, the Americas, North America, you know, certainly United States and Canada and Europe are very, very diverse at this point. So Frank, thanks for circling back. And I'm glad that we could clarify that. Oh, uh, let's see here. Do, do, do. While I was talking, I got a lot more comments. Hold on, I'm going back so I don't miss them. Do, 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 do. Uh, let's see here. Joseph says, Jennifer Coolidge for Mrs. Claus. You know, that if David Harbour would go along with it and I could see that he maybe would, that's brilliant. <laughs> She'd be great. Oh, Dre Films also likes shrinking. BM says, Grace, any Batman animated series or Superman animated? I don't believe so right now. I haven't heard anything about that right now, unfortunately. Ricky says, what are your predictions for Mandalorian Season 3 Nielsen ratings? One more week, can't wait. Yeah, it's like really close, isn't it? I'm not sure if they're doing screeners or not. They haven't done screeners for the last couple of Star Wars shows, so we'll see. Uh, but I'm very, very excited. Uh, I think, you know, I loved the Mando part. You know, Mando 2.5 at the end of Boba Fett was phenomenal. Uh, and I hope they have a lot of surprises in store for us. Allison says, why is every Disney property getting the live action treatment besides money? Not every story is meant for live action. Well, it is the money, Allison, I'm afraid. People love this stuff. It does extremely well. And they're just, so they're just going to keep doing it. Disney has to be able to compete with Marvel and Star Wars and the other areas in the, in the Disney empire. And that's, their, that's really what's helping them. Uh, as you can see, when they try and do new stuff, it, it, it goes pretty poorly. Baby Bear says, Grace, I always hear you talk about how Denzel Washington and Leonardo DiCaprio are movie stars. What does it take for an actor to be a traditional movie star? Great question, Baby Bear, and I like your name. Um, uh, a traditional movie star is someone who can still sell tickets consistently. Somebody who people are still very interested in and still is beloved by almost all. Uh, you know, and doesn't have like a niche audience. So when Denzel Washington and Leonardo DiCaprio release movies, Pretty much everybody goes to see them. They're still, I think they're really the only actors that can do that. Uh, Tom Hanks used to be that way, but for some reason, Tom Hanks got extremely politicized. I feel kind of bad for him because people are just straight up making up lies about Tom Hanks. Um, it was pretty shocking the other day when he was trending on Twitter. But, uh, but yeah, so that's, I think, what a traditional movie star still is. Sandra Bullock, some people have pointed out. Sandra Bullock is a, a, a remaining movie star. Joe, I'm glad you watched The Bear and loved it. Yeah, The Bear is great on Hulu. It's a, it's a fast watch. I, I'm sorry it took me so long to watch it myself. A lot of you, thank you for insisting I check it out. I loved it. Bradley Hutchinson says, I just want to apologize and came across as I was politicizing between the bastards with Irish and the British. Oh, Bradley, I don't think anybody took that away from that, but I'm glad that you were trying to clarify. Steven says, any tea on Blade? I don't have any tea, Blade tea at the moment. Uh, Jeff, I'd love to see Zoe Kravitz come back for Catwoman. We don't want to see the women replaced in every movie. I think that's a bad old school Hollywood thing. Uh, Andrew, I will review Cocaine Bear, and I'm going to see it this evening. Mario says, I have an opportunity to go back to university and get my master's. I worked in Hollywood, but I need a suggestion for a good monologue for my audition. 
Oh, that's very exciting, Mario. You want a good monologue? Oh, that's tough. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Uh, do you know a good theater bookstore? Um, sh there's Shakespeare. There, I forget. There used to be like a really good acting place in New York City that you could call up and look up for great monologues. Um, my advice to you would not to be do to do anything that's too current. I think they kind of frown upon that, and they think that maybe you're getting into acting for the wrong reasons. Try and get like a really good monologue. Uh, you know, you could always go Shakespeare, but you know, maybe you want, you know, maybe something from the 70s. They wrote a lot of good monologues and movies back then. Uh, you could even do something maybe from like uh, like a, a Scorsese or a Tarantino. That's tricky though. Uh, I, I, I think that really, you know, maybe you could find a professor. You know, this is a good advice because, you know, I'm very commercially oriented, as you know. <laughs> so I don't want to give you bad advice for a university, which is going to have a very different set of criteria than, like, say, I would or the industry would. So what I would recommend, Mario, is I would go to a professor who is currently teaching at that university in the drama department, the, a class that you would take if you got in, and say, I'm auditioning. Can you please recommend some, some monologues? That's what I would do. And I'm sure, I can't imagine that they wouldn't be willing to help you out with that. Zante says, should Marvel hire new writers? I'll break a leg, by the way. Zante says, should Marvel hire new writers for Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars since they are the same writers for Quantumania and Doctor Strange 2? Yes, immediately. The longer they wait, the worse it is. Christopher James says, hey, Grace, subscribe for almost 10 years. A member for two weeks now. Hooray, I love your photo. I'm working on some graphics for you. How do I get them to you? Oh, that's so kind of you, Christopher. The best way would be to DM me on Twitter um, and just uh, make sure I see it. I get a lot of DMs, so if I don't respond right away, just like politely just ping me and be like, oh, just bringing this back to your attention. And I, sh I should see it. I'm pretty on top of that stuff. Uh, Hugatso says, anything on Loki season two? Well, uh, as I said in my recent Kang video, I heard that Loki season two is about trying to stop Kang from building his chair and his technology. Captain Marvel says, have you watched Five Days at Memorial on Apple TV? I did. I watched the first few episodes and I thought it was incredibly well done, but then I thought they had not enough story for the number of episodes that they had. And so I stopped watching after I think about four episodes, but I really liked what I saw and I thought it was excellent. See here, Mika. I'm not sure about what they're going to be about a Star Wars celebration announcement for Obi Wan season two. The rumor in the trades is that they're going to announce a movie, hopefully, supposedly, a new Star Wars movie at the upcoming celebration. Uh, Rosario Dawson's going to be there too, so I bet they talk a lot about Ahsoka. Hank says, "Do you think Brainiac is too big of a villain for just one movie?" No, not starting out. I don't think so at all. I think a Superman Brainiac story would be fantastic. Anonymous Batty says, wa was watching old live streams with my cat Nyla before this started. She's a fan. Hope you're well. Ah, hey, Nyla. I love cats. Uh, Haunted Autumn says, Michael Waldron isn't writing a $3 billion film anytime soon. <laughs> sorry. Not sorry. Finn Moreau says, who, how would you like the DCU to approach Lois Lane? I would really like them to focus more on her being a journalist uh, and what that means today. Uh, and also, you know, being a journalist in the she said spotlight sense of the term, not just that she's an, an anchor or writing just Superman headlines, you know, uh, I would like, I think, you know, really having a serious look at journalism. I think that would be fascinating. And I don't like that she's just been turned into Superman's wife and the mother of his children these days. And like, like she's a, she's like, she like, it's like a child's definition of a parent's job at this point. Oh yes, she's a reporter and goes off and does big reporter things. Do we ever see them? No. Does it ever make a difference? No. So I would just like to see her like just be very much her own character. Oliver, your Catherine Hahn as Mrs. Claus is also excellent casting. Jack Den says, hey, Grace, any other tea on the Batman part two? Uh, I haven't heard any tea about it. You know, I'll share it when I get it if I feel it's not going to uh, mess up anything. BM, I didn't see your super chat. Oh, there it is. I did answer you, BM. I did answer you. I said I didn't think I heard anything about that recently. Ah, uh, thanks, smart girl. I'm glad you think so. I appreciate that. Uh, hey, James P., thanks for joining. All right, so that, but I'm afraid that's the end of the question and answer. Oh, I forgot to put the Q&A graphic up. Ah, oh, darn it. All right, so let me do some shout outs. Let me, oh, you don't have to apologize, BM. Uh, Joseph says, Peyton Reed wants Nova. Ha, 
Uh, Peyton Reed, I would be surprised. Like, let's see if he comes back. I'd be surprised. Um, I'd be like, Kevin Feige, you got to start making friends with these people. Um, you know, <laughs> you have to make difficult decisions. I heard Nova is delayed to such an extent, you shouldn't even bother thinking about it. Uh, all right, everybody. Uh, Hannah said, um, do you think there's a chance we might get any info about the Netflix Avatar The Last Airbender soon? I'm not sure. I think there must, maybe, I don't even, I think it's like, they have a real problem that the people who actually made Avatar are moving ahead very aggressively with their own content. So, uh, Steven, Madam Webb, I mean, they, they filmed it. And did I miss somebody else's super chat? That Wiccan fan says, I think Warner will hire Alan Heinberg. Do you think Warner Brothers will hire Alan Heinberg for Paradise Lost? That would be wonderful, but he's very busy with Sandman season two, unfortunately. Uh, I would love him to do Young Avengers, but I think they're rushing the Young Avengers. The Young Avengers should have just been introduced in their own space. I think it was a mistake to introduce the Young Avengers in other people's properties because it feels like they're replacing them instead of adding to them. And it just has turned out very poorly, I think. Smart Girl says, what would it take for the Russo brothers to return? They want to come back. Kevin Feige doesn't want them back. I think Kevin Feige felt maybe they were getting too much attention, maybe? I don't know. But I think they're needed. Voice and Jack says, the Secret Wars too early to hope for a 1610 read. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, well, you're welcome, Mario. I'm glad you liked our advice. And then Marvelous Jack says, Hi, Grace, do you think we'll ever get Polaris in the MCU as Wanda's relative? I don't even know if they're going to be doing the, 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 the Magneto as Wanda's father storyline at this point. And Voice and Jack says, What's a good Fantastic Four story to dive into? Oh, I got to tell you, I'm not a huge Fantastic Four fan. Hey, AG68. I'm not a big Fantastic Four fan, so it's hard for me to point you in a direction there, to be honest with you. Uh, I think some of the Jonathan Hickman stuff was pretty good when he took over the series. You might want to start there. Eric says, what are the ethics behind movie journalism? Uh, oh, that's too big a conversation. You mean like for what I do? I think, you know, I think you know. I think most people know. I would say the, the big things are, you know, don't have too big spoilers. Don't reveal stuff that will ruin the experience of going to the actual film and, or watching the show. And then also I would say uh, stay in your lane. All right, we're doing shout-outs. That's right, Dane. We're doing shout-outs. Declan says, still waking up with a coffee in Melbourne, Australia. Ah, oh, good morning. Bye, Carrie. Bye, Carrie. Have a great day. Thank you. That's very nice of you to say. Uh, what's that? Uh, Tay says, Grace, I got pulled over while listening to the stream. Have mercy on them, officer. Let's see here. Uh, Dujon says, do you believe Wanda is still alive? For sure. thousand percent she's still alive. Melissa says, I just got new glasses in upstate New York. Ah, congrats, Melissa. Grace, when will we see your new glasses? Oh, that's right. I'll try and debut them before the end of the month. That'll be fun. Keith, just made it to the stream. Had fun skiing on family day here in Canada. Oh, family day? Is there a family day in Canada? I wish we had a family day. What a wonderful thing that would be to have. Frosty Salt says they're watching Violent Night right now. Elliot Buck says, I just bought my ticket to go see Ant-Man at 3 p.m. today. I'm seeing it at a Cinemark. Oh, I like your emoji use there. Have a great day. Have a fun time. Ah, oh, Melissa, your emojis are adorable. Allison says, putting away groceries. Thanks for keeping me company. My pleasure. I'm glad you're getting a lot of stuff done. That's a great feeling. Steven says, sorting donations at the thrift store I manage in Jackson, Michigan. Ah, oh, what a great thing to do, Steven. Uh, Jennifer, uh, Jennifer Escalona, where did that go? I always love seeing Jennifer. Fighting a hangover from a crab boil this weekend. Oh, somebody had a good weekend. BM's, BM is at the University of Denver. Uh, let's see here. Ratataraxias is working out as usual in Baltimore with a cat. Is your, is your cat getting all pumped up? Is your cat pumping iron? Oh, that's a lot. I love that. Faith, uh, Fatine, Fatine Elwer says, uh, matching with you today, Grace. I'm also wearing a gray sweater. Awesome. Nice. Uh, Miss Andra says, watching the four-episode Osenkini series on Hulu. It's outstanding. Highly recommended. Ah, thank you. Right, Harlequin Dove wants a family day, too. Link says, I'm about to watch Triangle of Sadness. I'm trying to see as many Oscar nominees as I can. 24 out of 54 done so far. That's hilarious. Triangle of Sadness is actually a pretty good movie. It gets kind of slow, like at the beginning of the third act, but just power through it because it has a really good ending. Although I thought it was a little predictable, but it didn't make it any less enjoyable. 
Oliver wants me to wear the Scream 4 glasses for Scream 4? Maybe, maybe I will. Titans says, Family Day is a wonderful holiday here. Much needed since we don't have holidays in January. Yeah, I'm jealous that you have a family day. I think that sounds like such a wonderful thing and something that America is sorely missing. That would just be such a wonderful thing to do. I'm going to tweet about it and say, I just heard that, is it Canada? That Canada has a family day and we should have a family day too. That weird boy is eating McDonald's nuggets in Egypt. My God, you're doing one of my favorite things and it's such a wonderful, cool place. Boy, I would love to go to McDonald's in Egypt. One of my favorite things to do whenever I visit a foreign country, I like to go to McDonald's, go to a movie there, and see what the supermarket is like. And of course, I do the other touristy things too. I like to go to a department store and see what it's like to shop. I just like to see what it's like to live there. And uh, it's so fun. I had such a particularly good time in Paris doing that. Uh, nobody eats snacks at the movies in Paris. It's weird. Donnell says, just got my tickets to Dallas for next month. Going to see my best friend. Oh, have a good time. Uh, go to a rodeo while you're there. I visited Dallas. It was, it was fun. Uh, Bear Like Fire says, is that really your name? That's funny. Long time viewer, first time member, huge fan. Oh, that's awesome. Welcome. I love your Bear Like Fire name. That's really, that's really fantastic. And I love that you put a picture of yourself. I love being able to see you guys. Dane says, having coffee and a few bites of ice cream before I power through a graphic design project. We're at the finish line. Oh, that's awesome. Ricky says, uh, I'm packing up my place in Florida, moving to New York this week. Thanks for keeping me company. Wow, Ricky, that's a big move. That's very exciting. Welcome to New York. It's a great state. We love it here. Uh, I love Florida, too. Uh, KP says, I need to wear a flannel for any Scream watch along. I kind of have flannel. At first, I was like, I have no flannel. But I think I have like a flannel sweatshirt I could wear. Rashad says, at work, thankful for the stream to keep me company during this slow Monday. Yeah, it is slow today, right? Suddenly, everybody decided to celebrate President's Day. I wish someone had given me the memo. Uh, let's see here. James Griffin says, catching the stream from London with my boyfriend, Sam. Hey, James and Sam. And then John Kamara says, hi, Grace. Got into a law school, hoping to be an entertainment lawyer someday. Oh, that's exciting. What a great choice. That's a really great choice. Uh, make sure you try and get an internship at an entertainment law firm. And then, uh, let's see here. Damani says, about to go to the park with my little brothers. Ah, oh, that's cute. That's so nice. You're having a family day kind of anyway. Chris Diaz says, hi, Grace. I was in New York City until this morning. Back in Toronto, Canada now, enjoying family day. Wanted to say hi, but wasn't a member until someone just gifted one to me. Ah, oh, that's great. So glad I made the stream. I'm glad you made it too, and I hope you had a wonderful vacation. And Fatine is thinking about a second cup of coffee. Oh, I love it. All right, so everybody, oh, and uh, your little brother Gabriel says, Hi, Grace, I just finished eating brunch. It's 3.05 p.m. Ah, it's a technically a holiday. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. That's what brunch is. And that weird boy says, We have a sandwich that you don't have called the Big Tasty, and it's so good. Oh, I'm going to Google the Big Tasty. And uh, Hardy, uh, that sounds weird. <laughs> and Hardy Momo says, Hi, Grace, going back to Europe. Going back to the Europe diversity point, the World Cup had European teams with a high percentage of players from immigrant origin, Western EU more so. Oh, that's fascinating. That's very interesting. The World Cup is awesome. I enjoy the World Cup. Ted Lasso, season three, coming up fast. Oh, it's gonna, March is going to be good. We're eating good in March. I'm very excited about it. Oh, oh, bye, Argo. Bye, Argo. Uh, all right, everybody. I had a lovely time with you as always. Thank you for today's stream and I'll see you tomorrow. Three streams a week. I promised. I aim to deliver. And the Scream Watch Along is a BTT Movie Club exclusives, but you can join just for the month. You can join just for the month and that'll be this Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you can't join live, it will remain up for BTT Movie Club members to watch whenever they can. Sebastian says, thank you all for, thank you for all that you do. Feeling sick. Ah, oh, but all better now. I'm glad you're feeling better, Sebastian. I'm glad you're feeling better. Take care of yourself. Shahar, the next live should be tomorrow. I'm aiming for the lives this week to be today, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And they're always around the same time in the afternoon. Uh, all right, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.